Come right in. Oh, George, we've got company, and they're all in uniform. This is Bill Goodwin, inviting all you servicemen and women to enjoy another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen, our tenor Jimmy Cash, and Felix Mills and his orchestra. And now, meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Well, now that Mr. Burns is running for political office, Mrs. Burns is more proud of him than ever. And here she is, feeding her little candidate his breakfast. Would the second assistant substitute city councilman from the third district like another piece of toast? No, thanks. Would the second assistant substitute city councilman from the third district like another cup of coffee? <laughs> I don't believe so. Would the second assistant substitute Gracie, city councilman... Gracie, stop calling me. <laughs> well, you may as well get used to it, George. After the election, everyone will call you that. They will not. I want people to call me what they've always called me. Even my mother? <laughs> Well, in her case, I'll make an exception. And anyway, I'm not elected yet. Gordon Cates may win, you know. Oh, don't make me laugh. Even the morning paper says that Gordon Cates has a very slim chance. Really? Well, not in those words, but that's all he could have. It says right here, George Burns has a fat chance. <laughs> oh, fine. Now, if you've finished your breakfast, dear, here are your appointments for the day. My appointments? Sure. Like all big politicians, every minute of your day is just crammed with important conferences of things. I've written them out for you and titled it, My Day. I, uh, I can't read the scribbling. Well, that's because I had to get on a bus to write it. It, it wouldn't be a real My Day if it were written at home. I guess so. Well, I'll read it to you, darling. Now, here's today's schedule. 8 a.m., breakfast. 8.30 a.m., interview with newspaper man. Really? Which paper? The Times. He wants us to renew our subscription. <laughs> oh. 9 to 9.30 a.m., discussion of world affairs with Bo Carter and H.B. Cottonborn. 9.30, turn off the radio and leave the office. <laughs> Let me see that schedule. Hey, I'd better dress up today. 12 o'clock, luncheon with Mayor at City Hall. Mayor? Let me see that. Oh, that's Maya. Oh, Maya, Maya. <laughs> he, he runs the lunch counter at City Hall. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, valuable. Now, let me read it to you. 1.30, read fan mail. 1.30 and a half, answer it. <laughs> 1.31, newsreel pictures. Newsreel pictures? Yeah, and don't be late. There's a wonderful march of time. And then at 2.30... Look, I don't want to hear anymore. Oh, newsreel that pictures. must be the postman. He's been taking a poll of the neighbors to see who's going to vote for you and who's going to vote for Gordon Tate. Excuse me, dear. Good morning, Mrs. Murray. <laughs> Mr. Postman, did you complete your poll? Yes, ma'am. I interviewed a hundred people. Oh, and, and how many are voting for Mr. Burns? Two. <laughs> Two? Well, I presume you and your husband are voting for him. Oh, but Mr. Postman, surely you'll vote for my husband. Well, I'd like to, but I have to do what the party tells me. Oh, oh which party? Party I'm married to. <laughs> My wife, Mame. She likes Mr. Cates because he's fair and square. Well, George is fair. And he's so square his hat wears out of the corners. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'd like to vote for your husband. But as Mame goes, so goes me. <laughs> well, good night, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. <laughs> This is awful. If George finds out, his sensitive little heart will be broken. Well, what did the postman say, Gracie? How did the poll come out? Uh, uh, what, dear? Am I, am I out in front? Yeah, a little. But exercise will take that off. <laughs> I mean the survey, the vote. How do Kate and I stand? Well, he's just a teensy bit ahead of you. Oh, good. I like a close race. What's the score? 98 to nothing. <laughs> 98 to nothing? I might as well give up. Oh, George, don't say that. This is like a horse race, and it's just started. Gordon Case may be the horse out in front now. He may look back and think you're just an old plug. But when you cross the finish line, he'll be behind you, and then he'll see the real George Burns. <laughs> uh, thanks, dear. Oh, oh, come in. Good morning, folks. Well, I'm back. Oh, Mrs. Bundy, look, George, our cleaning woman is back in town. 
down. I think I'll go and get dressed and go to the office. What's the matter with you, Mr. Burns? Oh, uh, George is running for councilman in the coming election, but nobody's going to vote for him. The postman took a poll around the neighborhood. Well, if he expected to get votes for your husband, he should have taken a bat around the neighborhood. <laughs> you were out of town, Mrs. Bundy. Why, you... Oh, oh now, now, Mrs. Don't. Bundy, George, please, don't fight. Well, I'll see you later. Oh, poor George. It looks like Gordon Case will get every vote. Gordon Case? Is he running against Mr. Burns? Yeah. Well... You better start cleaning, Mrs. Bundy. Here's the broom. I'll bet I know one person who won't vote for Gordon Case. Who? That movie actor, Ray Milan. I clean house for him, you know. Oh, Ray Milan? Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh, he's cute. <laughs> You're telling me? <laughs> <laughs> Councilman George Burns or Gordon Case? Yeah. Well, I'm George Burns. Well, I'm Gordon Case. <laughs> Let's go home, Grace. Oh, don't wait, George. Mrs. Bundy said that Ray Milan lives next door to Gordon Case and that they don't get along, so we're bound to get a good reception here at Mr. Milan's house. Okay. Yes? Oh, hello, Mr. Milan. Gordon Case elected councilman, do you? I should say not. I'd rather see a moron in office. <laughs> oh, no. You, you see, George, I knew he'd support you. Uh, I'm George Burns, Mr. Milan. I'm I'm uh, running against Gordon Case in, in, in the election. Well, 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 come in. Well, thank come you, in. thank you. Well, you really feel strongly about Mr. Case, don't you? You said it. Why, I'd rather vote for a... But uh, well, I'd rather vote for your husband. Well, thanks. And if I'm elected, I'll do my best. I'll clean up the Daddy city. Daddy Cates thinks he's got so much sex appeal. <laughs> well, if I'm elected, mm. I'll do my best. I'll give this city Gordon a clean Cates. Why, I'd rather see a baboon in office. <laughs> well, if I'm elected, I'll do my best. I'll give the city a clean... Gordon Cates. Uh, Mr. Milan, you're not listening. Huh? Huh? Wouldn't you like to know how I stand? Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's been puzzling me ever since your wife had gone me 
Well, hmm. now, uh, Mr. Milan, we need your help to win this election. Well, what can I do? Well, now, for one thing, George seems to have trouble getting the women's vote. Uh, maybe you could give him a hint. Well, maybe I can. Now, let's see. Come here, George. Now, I'll show you how I'd ask a woman to vote for me. I'd take her hand. Here, give me a hand. I'd look into her eyes like this, and I'd say, oh, darling. <laughs> darling, I need your help. Will you vote for me? Oh, yes, yes, Ray, of course. <laughs> George had better be going now if he expects to visit every voter in this district before election. Is that how he's trying to get votes? Uh-huh. Is there a better way? Why, well, certainly. Put him on the radio. Oh, say, that's an idea. And television will be here any minute. Yes, there's not a moment to lose. <laughs> oh, this is a wonderful idea. The George Burns for Councilman program. We'll sell, sell George over the air just like he was a liver pill. Or, uh... <laughs> Or a rebuilt second-hand car. I'll go and get the script ready. Yeah, I know the guy who manages the local station. I'll go arrange for the time. Well, what do I do? Well, you're the product, George. What do products do? Well, let's drop him in the water and listen to him says. <laughs> well, never mind. And we'll see you at the station tonight, Mr. Milan. And thanks for helping us get George elected. I'd do anything to get even with Gordon Cates. Why, I'd rather see a weasel in office. If I'm elected, I'll do my best. <laughs> George and Gracie, Felix Mills, and the orchestra salute Eddie Cantor on his 35th anniversary in the theatrical profession. And here's Jimmy Cash to sing it for you. Jimmy? It had to be you. It had to be you. I wandered around and finally found that somebody who could make me be true. several hours later, and we take you to the radio station, where the George Burns for Councilman program, written by Gracie, is about to take the air. <laughs> We're on the air in 15 seconds, folks. Oh, thank you, Mr. Announcer. No, uh, don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. I've, I've been an announcer for, for, for years. Years. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. Be, 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 be calm, calm. Very oh, calm. Sure, 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 sure. 
presenting the George Burns for second assistant substitute city councilman for the third district program. <laughs> Featuring Mrs. George Burns, Ray Milland, Felix Mills and his orchestra, and yours truly, Glenn Hall Taylor. <laughs> we bring you comedy, <laughs> drama, <laughs> and music. <laughs> but first, a word about our product. George Burns. With men who know politicians best, it's George Burns. Who's he? Don't be fooled by imitations. The original George Burns comes in a shiny blue serge suit with patting in the shoulders. Act now. <laughs> help us put him in office. Our slogan is, let's start, get George going. L-F-G-G-G. Let's start, get George going. L-F-G-G-G. Don't forget the name, George Burns. Spell backwards, it's much harder to pronounce. Remember... <laughs> His name is George Burns. No other candidate can make that claim. And now you will hear the voice of George Burns himself. Thank you. If I'm elected, if I'm elected... Lovely voice, hasn't he, hasn't he? Well, well, on with the show. And now we bring you an episode of your favorite radio serial, Just Plain John's Other Wife Can Be Beautiful Backstage. <laughs> We take you now to the home of John and his wife, a typical, happy, wholesome American couple whose simple little problems are just like your simple little problems or my simple little problems or the simple little problems of the simple little family that lives in the simple little house next door. Oh, would you like more coffee, simple little John? Thank you, dear. Where is Bertram, our son? He won't be here. The police arrested him for murder. Really? <laughs> Whom did he kill? His fiance. Oh, too bad. They'd have made such a charming couple. I wonder if Bertram will get the hot seat. Yes, I wonder. Was there any mail this morning, dear? Only a letter from Chloe, our daughter. She's married to a soldier. Oh, such an impulsive child. Just yesterday she married a sailor. No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, that was a Marine, dear. The sailor was day before yesterday. I wonder if she'll ever settle down. Yes, I wonder. Darling, this coffee tastes a bit peculiar. I know. I'm afraid I made a silly mistake and filled a sugar bowl with arsenic. Oh. <laughs> well, you should really should wear glasses, dear. I wonder if we'll be able to reach the doctor before the arsenic is fatal. Yes, I wonder. Mm. Well, will Bertram get the hot seat? Will Chloe settle down? Will John and his wife reach a doctor in time? You'd like to know, wouldn't you? Well, if you don't vote for George Burns, we won't tell you, so there. <laughs> Naturally, before you vote for him, you want to hear George Burns' record. So here he is in person to tell you about it. Thank you. Well... But George Burns' record speaks for itself. Let's listen as his record speaks. <laughs> G-E-O-R-T spelled short, so vote for him. If small or large before he's under lock and key, is he G-E-O-R-T? And now, on with the show. Mystery, suspense, action. It's Crime Busters. <laughs> Listen carefully as we show you how officers of the law, working step by careful step, solve the case of the Eagle Rock Bank robbery. Oh! That man is now in prison for life. Crime does not pay. But it's no crime to vote for George Burns. Do it on election day and do it often. And now a word from our candidate. Friends, and that word reveals his whole lovable character. On with the show! Are you tired, run down, logy? Do you have saggy shoulders and tattletale tummy? Then vote for George Burns. He's your type of man. <laughs> hey, what's going on here? Be quiet, Bill. We're on the air. Oh. Out? Out? Well, okay, okay. Just Out. let me say hello to my friend, Ray Milland, will you, George? Hi, Ray. Hi, Bill. Ray, I, I, I sure enjoyed that lady in the dark. You then? Yeah, send me another one sometime. <laughs> out, 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 out. <laughs> On with the show! 
We bring you now 15 minutes of uninterrupted recorded music with Ray, the night watchman. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, sir, yes, sir. 15 minutes of solid music. No commercials, no talk about politics, just music. <laughs> this number is dedicated to Hal and Jesse, who announced their engagement on the same day that George Burns announced that he would run for second assistant councilman from the third district. And also to Mr. and Mrs. Conway, prominent citizens of the third district where George Burns is running for second assistant councilman. And to Oscar Brodney, conductor of the Cross Down Trolley, which runs past the house of George Burns, Candidate for second assistant councilman in the third district. And to Mr. and Mrs. Lewis, who recently became the parents of a baby girl, which was kissed by George Burns during his campaign for the office of second assistant councilman. And now, back to the music. You have just heard 15 minutes of uninterrupted music, presented by Ray the Night Watchman, and sponsored by the George Burns for Councilman Committee. And now, our candidate will outline his political platform. Well... If I'm elected... If he says, get on with the show! <laughs> How does the man in the street feel about voting for George Burns? For the answer to that question, we turn you over to Gracie, our inquiring reporter. Thank you. Uh, beside me at the microphone is the man I found in the street. Tell me, sir. <laughs> Tell me, who are you going to vote for? Who am I going to vote for? <laughs> Good old Alf Lander, that's all. <laughs> Alfred Landon isn't running. Isn't running? How do you like that? Leave the convention for two minutes and they switch candidates on you. You are listening to the George Burns for second assistant substitute city councilman from the third district program. <laughs> and now the entire remainder of this hour will be turned over to Mr. Burns for his campaign speech. Fellow citizens, 12 o'clock Pacific win the war time. And this station now leaves the air. The George Burns for Councilman program was a paid political broadcast and did not necessarily express the views of this station. In fact, we think George Burns is a jerk. <laughs> what? And now we're signing off. This is station KGC, owned and operated by Gordon Case. Good night. <laughs> Tenor Jimmy Cash sings the romantic ballad, Speak Low. Sing low, James. Speak low when you speak low. Our summer day withers away. To soon, to soon, speak low. When you speak low, our moment is sweet. It's a drift we're swept apart too soon. Speak low, darling, speak low. Love is a spark lost in the dark. Too soon, too soon, I feel wherever I go that tomorrow is near, tomorrow is here. Time is old and love so brief. Love is your gold and time a queen. We're late, darling, we're late. The curtain descends, everything ends. Too soon, too soon, I wait, darling, I wait. Will you speak low to me, speak loud to me, and so... George and Gracie. Gracie, I've got a throw for you. Next week, our guest star is going to be Lawrence Tibbetts. Lawrence Tibbetts. Tibbetts. He sings, doesn't he? And how? He's one of the greatest singers in the world. As good as you? Oh, honey, you can't compare me with Lawrence Tibbetts. I can't hit those deep, low notes like Tibbetts. 
He brings them right up from his diaphragm. Where's that? The diaphragm is right below your chest. Oh, well, then you ought to be able to bring up the lowest notes in the world from down there where your chest is located. <laughs> Take it easy. If you don't, I fear that I don't mental 